Hello, I'm Kimberly of Happy Gals Vintage. Thank you for stopping by to check out my video about vintage teacups and how to choose a good vintage teacup. Um, today we are going to talk specifically about things to avoid when shopping for vintage teacups. Um, if you're looking to start a collection or improve upon your collection, there are a few things that you should be thinking about when you're out looking for a vintage teacup or when you're online shopping for a vintage teacup. So let's get started. What are some things to avoid when you're looking for a vintage teacup to add to your collection? Well, there are some obvious things um, that we can start with. For instance, um, you want to avoid getting a vintage teacup with a crack. And you might say, well, that's pretty obvious, Kimberly. Of course, I don't want a teacup with a crack. But the thing to keep in mind is that often the cracks can be hard to see or notice. Um, especially if you're shopping in sort of a dimly lit antique shop. A lot of them are that way. They're in old buildings um, that aren't lit that well. They have a lot of inventory, so it's sort of packed in a small spot and sometimes it is very difficult to see a crack. Um, the same thing goes for chips, which is another thing that you want to avoid. Um, a chip would be just a little tiny ding. Usually it's out of the edge of the teacup. Um, at some point it hits something that just ding, cracked a little piece right out. Um, often chips are very small. They can also be at the bottom of the cup. Um, or occasionally it will be along the edge of the matching saucer and chips again can be hard to see um, when you're shopping for a vintage teacup. Now when I go out shopping um, and buying for my company for Happy Gals Vintage, a lot, a lot of the times I will bring along someone younger, um, like one of my children, I have a 16 year old son and a 20 year old daughter, and I will bring one of them along to have their younger eyes <laughs> so they can look over items for me um, when I'm in the shop before I've actually purchased things. And that can be very helpful, um, especially if I forgot my reading glasses. <laughs> but um, there's another way that you can check for chips and for cracks very easily um, without having someone along who is younger, if you're older, maybe you are that age. Um, and the way to do that is to use your fingertips and that means you just run your fingertips right along the edges of the cup and porcelain and fine bone china is so smooth that if there's anything wrong with the cup you are going to feel it even if you can't see it now some cracks in teacups they're called hairline cracks and they are so tiny that unless you're just in the very best light, you won't see them. Um, and then all of a sudden you'll get just the right angle and oh, oh my goodness, there's a hairline crack. And you know, if it's a really nice old antique teacup um, from a really good maker, you may still want to purchase a teacup with a hairline crack um, if it's a highly collectible teacup. But the thing to keep in mind is that often a hairline crack um, won't remain a hairline crack over time. Um, it can get bigger. It can really make the teacup lose its integrity, the structural integrity um, over time. And a bigger crack um, especially is something you really should probably avoid in almost, almost all cases when purchasing a teacup. But again, when you, if you're feeling along in the very smooth surface of your teacup, um, if there is a crack or there is a chip, it, the chances are pretty, pretty good that you are going to feel it. What, will, what it'll feel like is a little snag in the smoothness. So you're moving along and all of a sudden, oh, this teacup doesn't have any chips or cracks. I'm just pretending. <laughs> but you move along and you're like, oh, oh. And then if you look really close, you get it just the right light, you're like, oh, there it is. And then you can make the decision whether or not it's a teacup that you still want anyway. You may. Um, 
or you may not. You may decide, you know what, I only want perfect teacups. And for the most part, that's what I sell in the Happy Gals Vintage Shop is teacups that are in excellent condition. If I happen to have one that has some type of a flaw, um, when I list it on our website, I am very specific about what the damage is on the teacup, and I take uh, pictures so that the customer can see exactly what, what it is they're buying know <laughs> um, what it is that they're purchasing because I think that's only fair. <laughs> the next thing to think about is crazing. Now crazing is when the finish or the surface of the porcelain has little tiny, it's almost like hairline cracks only it's even smaller and it doesn't go as deep into the porcelain. It's little tiny cracks, almost like if you see dry, you know, a photo of dried mud and there's little tiny cracks just all through the surface. Well, that's what crazing looks like. And generally, crazing will happen on a teacup that was made of inferior porcelain, an inferior porcelain clay mix um, from the beginning. Or the porcelain is just so old that it's beginning to break down. Um, and in that case, again, if it's a really old antique um, from a, a well-known maker or a really beautiful old antique, you may still want to purchase the teacup, even though it has crazing. But generally, um, you probably don't want to get a teacup with crazing for your collection, if you can help it. If there is crazing in a teacup, it means that the teacup was not stored properly over the years. Um, often, you know, I will come, up, come upon vintage teacups that are 50 years old or older and they are in excellent condition because the person who had them in their collection maintained them in a home or a place where the teacups were kept in consistent temperature conditions and not kept in, you know, bright light or sunshine, you know, out in the elements, all these types of things eventually are going to damage and break down a teacup and can cause crazing. Now, many vintage teacups, almost all of them, are accented in gold. Um, a lot of them are, it's 14 karat gold, 18 karat gold, um, that is applied by an artist to the rim and to the handle, um, to, to the edges of, of the bottom of the teacup and the edges of the, of the saucer that match and it's really something that adds a lot of beauty to the teacup. Um, this little set right here from my shop is actually a demi -tallis, but you can see what I'm talking about. This one has a lot of gold finishing on it. It's really quite beautiful. Um, sort of an art deco kind of look. I believe this one is from the 1920s actually and it's uh, very beautiful and it's German and um, the great thing about this one is even though it's very old the, the teacup or the demi tasse I should say was stored really well and it clearly was used only for display and no one was actually drinking from it because there's really no wear to the gold finishes even on the handle so that's often what you'll find on vintage teacups is if there's any wear to the gold finishes, it's going to be on the handle or on the edge of the rim where someone was drinking um, from just repeated use. And so, again, it doesn't necessarily mean that you don't want to purchase a vintage teacup that has wear to the gold finishes or the handle. You may still like the teacup enough that you decide it's worth it and you still want it in your collection even though it clearly has had some use, um, but it's a good thing to watch for and be aware of um, so that you are an informed buyer when you're purchasing vintage teacups for your collection. And maybe you are someone who um, purchases vintage teacups and doesn't just put them up on a shelf for display, but who actually drinks from your teacups. And in that case, you may not it may not matter to you at all if there's wear to the finishes because you yourself might actually add some wear to the finishes of your teacups in your collection. And that's fine too. It can be a lot of fun to drink tea or whatever beverage you like out of a really 
fabulous cup, right? It makes you feel um, inspired and important and sort of royal <laughs> to drink out of something so beautiful um, and so ornate. So another thing that you might want to think about when you're purchasing um, a vintage teacup for your collection is that occasionally there will be a teacup that was produced that if you look on the bottom of the teacup or the bottom of the saucer it may say um, for decorative use only or for decoration only. Personally I would avoid those types of teacups for your collection only because it usually means um, that they were made probably in China which is not necessarily a bad thing. Maybe Gorgeous things, wonderful things, high quality things are made in China, so don't think I'm putting down China. Um, however, these particular types that say for decoration only, it generally means that there are some kind of toxic um, substances either in the mix of the porcelain itself or more likely on the finishes that they have put, um, the paints or the sealants, whatever it is, the hand painting that they've done on the teacup has possibly lead in it or some other chemical that you really don't want um, in your body. You probably don't want to be touching it or drinking from, obviously not drinking from the cup or eating from the cup. So again, it's up to you. Of course, you can purchase whatever you like and if you see a teacup and it's absolutely gorgeous, you want it for your collection, you're not going to be handling it a lot. And it says for decoration only, that I would um, think that it would be best to just keep it in mind, right? To know what it is that you're purchasing when you're purchasing that, that type of a teacup. Now, another thing that you might want to keep in mind when shopping for a vintage teacup is what they call a, rattling a little bit, is what they call a mismatched set. And um, these are sets where the teacup um, and the saucer may look really great together, um, but they actually don't match each other. They were not originally a set that was created um, by the same makers. So for instance, this teacup and this saucer, they look pretty nice together. Um, and if you were in an, an antique shop and you weren't paying real close attention, um, you might pick this up and take this home and think, wow, I got a really nice set at a really good price. Um, but then when you actually take a look at the bottoms of the teacup and of the saucer, you find that they actually are made by two different makers and they're not a matched set at all. Um, this is a, a saucer by Ainsley and this is a teacup by Royal Albert. And they make a, a not a bad looking set, but actually if you start to look really close, the colors don't actually match um, because this is actually the teacup that goes with this saucer. And this is the saucer that actually goes with this teacup. And you can see that these are actually a much nicer match <laughs> than what we had. Now. You may not care, you may say, oh well, as long as they look to look good together, once they're up on display, in my case, um, I don't care. And that is fine. <laughs> However, if you are thinking you want a set that could increase in value or hold its value um, over time, but more likely increase over time, then they really need to be a matched set. But occasionally, this is something that, you know, the antique dealer may not have noticed or um, they, they may have lots of mismatched sets and they do it all the time and they expect that customers are of course going to carefully check out what they're buying before they purchase it, right? Um, because it's very easy to look at the bottoms and just see what it is that you're purchasing. Um, occasionally the dealer will also on the tag will write something like as is. So it'll be like the name of the item, the cost and the little as is in little brackets or parentheses. And what that as is means is that you should look at the set carefully that there is either some damage or it's a mismatched set 
or something is going on um, that makes it not a completely um, completely an excellent condition set. Uh, so, and speaking of sets that are not in perfect condition, um, another thing that I have noticed when shopping for vintage teacups is often if you purchase from um, a thrift shop, occasionally on the teacup they might have a sticker, right? Like a big sticker with a sale price on it. <laughs> or they might have um, tape. Some dealers will actually take masking tape or some kind of tape and tape the saucer right to the teacup because they don't want to end up with mismatched sets and they don't want the teacup sort of rattling against the saucers when people are looking at it and whatnot and they don't want people to drop it, you know, so they tape them all together. Um, and if you are shopping in a situation like that and you're interested in a, tea, in a teacup that has a lot of tape and stickers on it, I would suggest that you take the time to actually carefully peel the tape back so that you can see the surfaces that are under the tape or the stickers. And you could also always carefully put it back once you're done so that the, the person whose shop that you're in, um, that you won't have undone the work because they obviously have gone to that trouble and they want their items displayed in that way. Um, however, you know, occasionally there's damage underneath that tape. And I don't think that the dealers are doing it on purpose. I think they're just quickly taping things up and not paying much attention. However, um, a hairline crack can easily be under tape that way. Um, a little chip can be under tape that way. Also, some of the tapes that they use are so strong or acidic even, um, they're not an archival tape that in really delicate older sets, um, the tape itself will actually damage the finishes of the teacup, which is so tragic. I hate to see that. Um, so be very careful as you are peeling away any tape so that you're not removing like a hand painting um, or delicate gold finishes from very old teacups. Um, I wish there was a way that I could um, talk to every store owner out there who is doing that who doesn't realize that they actually might be permanently damaging some otherwise very beautiful vintage and antique items. So those are the things that I avoid when I personally am shopping for vintage teacups either for my own collection or for my shop Happy Gals Vintage. Um, if you have other things that you avoid um, when you are shopping for vintage items, and especially vintage teacups. I hope you will comment below this video. We would all like to hear um, what you think and your ideas about this. And if you are interested in shopping for some very fine quality vintage teacups that I have already personally selected, they've already gone through my process of um, checking for things that are right and wrong with the teacup, and they are now in my shop Happy Gals Vintage, then just look at the link below in the description of this video and you will see, um, you can quickly just click right there and it'll take you right to my shop Happy Gals Vintage. And all the items that are around me that I've been showing you during this video are available there for sale. I will also have links to specific items that you saw during this video below as well. If you liked this video, please do click the little like button below the video for me. That helps more people get to see this video on YouTube. And if you would like to watch more videos about vintage teacups and about other vintage items in my shop, and also I have a whole series of videos that I'm working on about different ways that we can be happier in our lives simple, affordable, fun ways just to add some happiness and joy to everyday living, um, then please do subscribe to the channel. And if you also want to be sure that you don't miss any of the new videos that are being released on our channel, then there's just click the little bell notification button and then every time a new video comes out, you'll get to see it. So thank you so much and I'll see you again real soon.